107 and section 106 of the constitution set out the eligibility criteria and qualification for the national assembly and provincial legislatures respectively they provide that every citizen who is qualified to vote for the national assembly and or uh, the provincial legislature is eligible to stand for election except if one anyone who has been declared to be of unsound mind by a court of the republic is in the list or two any person who is said to be an unrehabilitated insolvent or thirdly any person who was convicted of an offense and sentenced to more than 12 months imprisonment without the option of a fine this disqualification ends five years after the sentence has been completed. This ground of disqualification does not extend to persons who are yet to be sentenced and those while sentenced are yet to exhaust their appeal processes in law. Of the 82 objections received, 74 were submitted on time. A total of eight objections were submitted after the cutoff time. Despite many of the objections not meeting the prescribed um, format of, sub of, of submission, the Commission, in keeping with its obligation to ensure free and fair elections, considered whether substantively the objections met the criteria in the Constitution and the law. Substantively, this statistics on objections reveal the following trends. One, there were no objections received claiming that candidates were unrehabilitated in solvents. Two, there were no objections received with allegations that one or more candidates on the list had been declared to be of unsound mind by a court of the republic. And thirdly, a total of 31 objections implicating eight candidates alleged that candidates were not qualified to stand owing to criminal records and or convictions. The Commission dismissed objections in relation to seven candidates and sustained one objection. The Commission could only act within the confines of the law and the Constitution. This Commission has written to the objectors, candidates, and the nominating parties to advise them of its determinations as required. Any objector, party, or candidate aggrieved by the decision of the Commission may appeal the decision, this decision with the Electoral Court by the 2nd of April 2024. The Electoral Court has up to the 9th of April to determine this um, this appeals. The process of candidate nomination will culminate in the Commission releasing the list of political parties and candidates that will appear on the various ballot papers, and this list will be published, uh, sorry, this list will be published on the 10th of April. A novel feature in the 2024 national and provincial elections is that independent candidates will contest for seats in the National Assembly and Provincial Legislatures. Six independent candidates will contest for seats in the National Assembly, and six will contest the Provincial Legislature elections. We once again remind voters that they may only vote at a voting station in which they are registered. Voters who will unavoidably be away from their voting districts on election day may give notice to, of their intention to vote at another identified voting station by 17 May 2024. The Electoral Code of Conduct has been in effect since February 23 when proclamation of the elections um, was concluded. On the 4th of April 2024, the Commission will convene and all contestants to a special ceremony where they will publicly pledge to adhere to the code of conduct as well as to get their members and supporters 
to act in a manner that is consistent with the code of con conduct. We thank you very much for being here with us uh, this afternoon. Um, I, I trust that, that the statement is very clear, um, that, that there are not many questions indeed. Um, but we end our statement there. Thank you very much, Chairperson. At this point in time, I'm going to invite uh, members of the media uh, to pose um, questions. Uh, the day of clarity or any other time. Uh, please introduce yourself um, and tell us uh, the house that you are from. Yes, please. One, two, yes, Uh, good afternoon, thank you so much. Uh, Slinda Lomasigane from ENCA. Um, I'd like to um, ask whether or not uh, candidates who appeared on more than one list have decided uh, where they're going to fall. And the protest outside, um, an, an issue with the Rise South Africa that says that they appeared on um, the list to be able to contest elections and now they don't appear and they haven't heard back from the IEC. Just your comments there, thank you. Thank you so much. It's Natasha Perry here from SABC News. Um, that you mentioned here that a total of 31 objections implicating eight candidates alleged that candidates were not qualified owing to criminal records or convictions. I don't know if I'm pushing my luck here, yeah. but <laughs> can you please have the names of you know those people, perhaps? And then also, um, just maybe as a final number, how many parties are now contesting the elections? Because remember the last time you released a statement, it was around 115 and then 16 independent candidates. That number has now gone down. Can you just have um, that number? Also, just as a follow-up to Sli's question, um, Mpot Dagada, the president of Arise um, South Africa, has alleged that you took him off the list. So um, after that statement came out, when we went to the website, his name was there, you know. And I further reached out to all game changers, um, that's the party yard, Zuma, and the same thing, they had an issue, um, but they then uh, were taken into the confidence by the IEC to say that actually their name's on the list. So was there a technical issue or technical problems with, um, you know, the provisional list that were provided on the IEC's website? Also with that process, how is that process of the objection process and the inspection process over the two days. Any challenges from um, political parties or so? Thank you. I'm going to take the third, the third question, please, sir. Uh, <coughs> Junior Kumar from Newsroom Africa. Uh, my colleague did not want to push a lot. I'm definitely going to push my lot. Um, <laughs> We saw the former president Jacob Zuma appearing first on the Omkondo Wesizwe's uh, party list. We just wanted to get clarity on whether he is one of these eight people that were objected against from standing based on uh, prior criminal records or criminal conviction. Also, we just wanted to get clarity on that section um, 47 of the Constitution. Does it prevent him from being on the ballot or does it only prevent him from uh, standing for public office because it seems to be that way the question that uh, MK is, is arguing that that part of the constitution should not prevent him from uh, being on the ballot but it should prevent him only from standing for public office and also there's this question that he has already had two terms um, they are also arguing that this only kicks in once let's say he is uh, nominated but also on the um, uh, code of conduct you indicated that the Code of Conduct kicked in as soon as the President uh, proclaimed the elections. But we've heard uh, political parties such as Mkondo Wesizwe saying that the elections won't go ahead uh, if they are not on the ballot. Has there been any action taken or who has to approach the Electoral Court for, to, uh, for that party to be held uh, to that standard that is set by the Code of Conduct? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there. I will take another uh, a, a group of um, uh, questions. Let me start with you, Chair. Okay. Um, let me let me start with Junior because you are right at the end. Mm -hmm. I 
I think I think there's nothing to push um, and and see if there's luck or not. We you know this these things are things we do officially and 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 we communicate them to those that have objected um, and the parties that have nominated them. In the case of former President Zuma, yes, we did receive an objection, um, which has been upheld. The party that nominated him has been informed, and so the objectors are being informed. The other names of persons that we, you know, were objected to, um, that 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 information really we can make available. Um, we've been dealing with too many things. I don't have the individual um, individual ones. If my colleagues can remember, um, by all means, I'll let them um, help you with that. You asked the question um, about the ballot uh, and President Zuma being, being um, on the ballot. Um, we, we will, as the Commission, be, be dealing with issues concerning the ballot very shortly, and we will deal with those, with those questions very fully. Today, we would like to focus on the process of candidate nomination and the issues connected there, too. Um, I have indicated um, that um, the effect of the, of the objections brought against um, um, uh, the former president we've dealt with, and, and you, you, you have that answer. The code of conduct, yes, it, it has taken effect um, from when the elections were proclaimed. Um, we have not, at this stage, up to now, taken or there has not been a matter that has been taken to the electoral court. But that does not mean we have not been engaging with parties and persons. It is work we do every day. We, when we have uh, uh, opportunities in the media, we raise those issues, we remind people of their obligations. But today, when we deal with issues where candidates are now confirmed, um, we remind everyone, candidates, parties, and their supporters, that they are indeed bound by that code. Um, it may well be that when someone then violates, we will, or someone may take them to court. You also ask the, court, the question, who would take such a person to the electoral court? Anyone. Um, and, and it's a court process. You don't make allegations you cannot substantiate. So when you make allegations, you do as you would do normally with a court, provide the evidence um, that, that you have uh, against such a person. Natasha, I, I'm, I'm sure I've answered the question in relation to uh, eight. Um, I don't have them, but if my colleagues have, they will help. Um, the allegation that we have removed someone from the list sounds like we really have been personal and intentional. No, we, we don't do that and we haven't done it. What we have done is exercise the provisions of the law without fear, without favor, and without prejudice. Anyone who has been removed from a list, we will have reasons why we have done so. Um, we will have relied on a provision of the Act or the Constitution, and we, we accept that we have a fundamental responsibility in exercising that role very carefully, which we believe we have done. Technical problems with uh, provisional lists, yes, we have been informed that um, on the first day of um, of the list being published in the morning, uh, there were there were there was a list or there were lists published that that did not take into account um, a provision of Schedule One, Capital A, Item Three. That provision relates to the peremptory requirement of any party that is contesting the national, the elections of the National Assembly to provide a list, what we call a national to national list, together with at least one regional list. You know, one regional list. And we do have parties 
that regrettably have not met that parental requirement. That was taken off. It wasn't taken off because of the system's error. And I want to be very frank and clear. The parties concerned did not comply. It wasn't because the system did not publish them all, all you know. They simply did not comply um, with that provision, and we, we, have, we have communicated that um, to, to, to those parties. Um, I think I've dealt with your, with, with your issues, and then Slindelo, um, you, you, were, you were asking questions about um, candidates on more than one list. Uh, those candidates are not for us to, to decide whether they stay here or they stay there or they are removed on both or one or whatever. Um, we are required um, to, to inform um, parties that nominated them that they are standing on more than one list. That's all we do. Parties will then decide what they want to do with those situations. Um, if, they, if they want to replace them um, from their list, um, it's, it's a call they make and not the commission. I, I, I trust I, I captured your question. Um, I, I, I have dealt with the issue of a party that says it, you know, it was, it appeared and it no longer appears. For my candidate, I mean for my colleagues, have I missed any, any, any question? Um, uh, have uh, I missed your question? Let Remind me, me. Let me have, let me have the, the mic back, Jay. Uh, I believe, I believe you haven't. Um, I believe uh, at the moment you've answered everything uh, properly. If there are follow-ups, do you mind if I take fresh hands? and then we'll come back and, and, and see for follow-up uh, follow questions. Let's do that. I saw... Yes, please. Um, there's another one over there. If she can please go first. Yes. There's someone that I was hand I can see, but whose face, face I can't see. So uh, if you can go one, go two, and go three. Does that sound okay? So, no. so the Mutila from the Daily Maverick. Um, so there were rumors circulating that some parties um, forged signatures to get onto the list. Um, whether this is true or not, could you please tell us what steps are taken by the IEC to get signatures and the validity of signatures? Also, another thing is that the chief electoral officer has the power to lodge um, their own um, objections. Um, it would be good to know if this was done or not, and if so, when, under what circumstances. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Masuko. It's Ferial Hapaji from the Daily Maverick here. May I please inquire if the Commission is very unanimous, unanimous in upholding the one objection? Um, secondly, will additional protection be provided to Commissioner Pillay? Because when she previously um, issued a warrant of arrest against the former president, she came under some some threat. Um, could you also explain to us, just step by step, what happens now? Does it go to the electoral court? And when does that decision have to be made so that you meet your deadlines? Um, and then a, a quick final one. The mayor, Cabello Guamanda, is on the list. He seems to be a paid public servant and therefore not allowed, his candidature is not allowed on the list. I wonder if that's a correct reading of the law. Sorry, the person that I can't see. Um, from News 24. I just want to know if the Commission is again concerned about utterances being made by the former president. He again yesterday um, made suggestions that the elections could be rigged or that special votes could be used to rig the elections. Are you concerned by um, these constant um, aspersions that are being made by, about the IEC? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to start with you, Chairperson. If you want to allocate yes. further to other commissioners, please feel free to do so. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I think, let me. Um, Ferial, you've asked a very important question, and I think um, Commissioner Love will deal with some aspects of because the, the, the one question you asked uh, made me think of other things that we have done, which, which we really haven't spoken about, and I think it, it's important to speak about. Um, you, you ask if if, if we had, um, we were unanimous, 
we were unanimous. Um, you, you, you see, these are not matters we deal with that are personal. There's a provision of the law against which we must measure an objection. Yeah, uh, against which we must measure an objection. And, and it's straightforward. Um, it's whether the person qualifies or does not qualify. It, it has nothing to do with a lot more than that. But what you, you did, and, 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 and I didn't deal with, was the fact relating to Judge Pillay, who is a member of the commission. In, in the matter affecting uh, the former president, the commission, uh, Judge Pillay recused. She recused. She recused. And I think it's fundamental um, because this process is a process that has to be safeguarded and to be, and Judge Pillay recused, not because we said so, because she understood how these matters relate um, and, and their, their weightiness on, on, on the, the work we were, we were undertaking. The rest of the questions you have, I'm going to ask Commissioner Love to deal with you on. Uh, well, uh, Mayor uh, Guamanda. Um, Mayor Guamanda is not bad from um, contesting. One of the things we do when an election like this comes, we, we speak to the minister responsible for public service. The law provides that um, they may provide for circumstances under which public servants uh, intending to contest an election may do so. And once they are elected, they must then choose whether they proceed with the elected office or, or they are the other side. So that arrangement is not a problem. Um, I'm, I'm almost certain the mayor would not be the only one, um, but it, there's nothing um, um, irregular about it. There was a question asked about vetting signatures. Um, the signatures are submitted to, to, to the, have been submitted. Um, we, we, have, um, we have confirmed that the persons that have been submitted are indeed um, registered voters, in other words, those persons that qualify uh, to, to submit site shipping signatures. Anyone who wants to, 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 to um, you know, object uh, to this um, can do so. We, we haven't, um, yeah, uh, Commissioner Lam will, 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 will help me deal with, with, with that. And then I think the last one, oh yeah, the, the, the um, the CEO's power to lodge objections. I think Larato uh, Mozilla asked. The CEO has the power. Um, I think it has not been necessary for him to do so because we have not received an objection from him. But he is um, uh, entitled to do so if he wanted to do so. Um, the process is now gone. He cannot, he is bound by the same rules that bind everyone that's Questions I did not answer. Um, help me, our colleagues uh, will help as well. Um, thanks, uh, thanks very much. Um, a couple of things. First of all, with regard to the process um, going forward in terms of the objections, um, any person who is an objector or the party um, about whose candidates that person is objecting will receive um, the decision of the Commission and can then approach the Electoral Court. It's not for the Electoral Court automatically to review or in any manner um, or shape to, to take on everything, but that approach can be made. And the Electoral Court um, has got um, a, a time frame within which, and I think that's in our statement, uh, by the 9th of April in order to resolve those, those decisions so that we can proceed with the, um, uh, the ballot uh, printing process. Um, I think the second thing is that in relation to um, 
the issue of unanimity and, and the recusal. The important thing, I think, about the recusal of the judge, and she was very clear about this, is that the basis of the objection was um, dealing with a sentence um, that was uh, passed in relation to Mr. Zuma, and she was, at the time, a member of the Constitutional Court. And so it's clearly for um, that reason that she believed that it was important to um, have that refusal, and we appreciated um, uh, that process. But for the rest, as the Chair has indicated, um, we, we, we act as a collective. Um, in terms of the utterances um, that have been reported in the media in relation to, uh, well, from members of the um, MK party as well as um, we are told from um, Mr. Zuma, we are very concerned. Um, as the chairperson has indicated, we have been engaging and we do believe that it's important for um, all uh, role players in our country to recognize that elections are a collective responsibility and the code of conduct uh, is there to ensure that that kind of collective responsibility is owned by all and in particular is owned by those people um, and those political organizations that intend to contest. And the last thing was just in relation to um, the, the signatures. Um, uh, one of the requirements for the submission of candidates was also for uh, political parties to submit the um, lists, not just the names and the ID numbers, but the actual list with the signatures of those um, registered voters uh, who supported the um, candidature of, the, of that political party, if it's an unrepresented party or that independent candidate. And of course, once those documents are up, were uploaded, it was possible for the Commission to verify the signatures in relation to other documentation that the Commission has given that they are registered voters. So um, there has been a process of that kind of uh, careful review to the extent that the administration thought was necessary. Um, I think that I've covered the other aspects. Thanks, uh, Dr. Masuka. Okay. Uh, commissioners, before I take uh, follow-up uh, questions, could you please just admit um, questions that are coming from um, that are coming from online? Uh, one is from Tidi Madea from Eyewitness News. It reads as follows. The IEC's published candidate list show that parties eligible for the national ballot have significantly reduced. How did the IEC get there? The second one, parties that have been left out of the system due to technicalities or administrative errors on their part, do they still have an opportunity to fix the issues and be included. This includes those who might, who might have not submitted names for the third ballot paper. I believe we've covered that, but I think it, uh, the question seems to indicate that we need to say a little bit more about it. The third and final question from online is, can the IEC confirm if there are requests for an audit of signatures and if such a request has also come from Limpombo? Commissioners, there you are. Can tell you. Uh, yeah, I can tell you that uh, there's a question that Commissioner Love is going to answer that I missed as well. Uh, but let me deal with the ones that I, I um, from CD, I think it was. The a confirmation from Limpopo, yes, we, we have received. Um, we have received that. It, um, in the manner that we received it, 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 it was styled as an objection in terms of Section 30, it wasn't. Uh, Section 30, 30 doesn't provide uh, for us to deal with that kind of objection. So in that respect, yes, we have received and we have dealt with it. Um, fixing of issues at this point, no. The, the, what we are dealing with is finalizing the list of candidates. We're not dealing with replacements, with, you know, it's, it's confirmation of persons that qualify 
and persons that don't qualify. In the event that persons qualify, they stay on the list. In the event that such persons don't qualify to be removed, they are removed and they will not um, uh, return on the list. The issue I missed was where, how we managed to reduce the list and I could... Yeah, it's okay to me. Um, shall I read it again? Yes. Sure. <coughs> so the, the, the essence of the... Let me not paraphrase. Paraphrasing can be dangerous, so let me not do that. Uh, the question reads, the IEC's published candidate lists show that the parties eligible for the national ballot have significantly reduced. Okay. And then it says, how did the IEC get there? What did he do? Um, the IEC does nothing to manage the length of a ballot. Yeah. It applies the law. Um, parties either comply or don't comply with the law. And it's the only way that they are either removed or confirmed to be on the list. Um, I, think, I think that's the long and short of it. We didn't manage anything. Uh, we, we got to where we are because the law is the law is the law. Okay. It's, a, it's a process of uh, natural selection. Thank you. Okay, um, any follow-up questions? I'm just doing one last sweep across the room. I don't want to keep you longer than, um, than necessary. Any takers? Yes, please, Natasha. Yes, please, Feria. Um, got two. There are, people that, there, are, there are people that I can't see, but I think Kate can see them. Kate, please help me. There's nothing else. Mr. It's Mayor, I might have missed it, um, but you mentioned here that um, a number of parties do not comply. How many parties didn't comply? And then just um, back to the issue of just if you can just give us a rough estimate of how many political parties will be in the race for these elections. Thank you. And independence, please. Thank you. Thank, um, thank you very much. Uh, should the former president go to the electoral court and that court um, agree with the IEC and then the former president wants to take it to a, a different court to appeal, does the ballot printing continue while that appeal process is ongoing? Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, uh, commissioners, over, here, over to you, Chair. Um, let me start with the last question. Um, because it's difficult, but the answer is easy, if I will. The, the issue with um, the former president's um, nomination does not affect the continued um, um, presence of the, the, the party that nominated him. You know, the party is not disqualified. Um, it's just a candidate in the party that, that is. Yes, uh, in terms of uh, court processes, uh, that's why on Monday, um, is it the second Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, all parties and candidates that may be aggrieved by the decisions the commission has taken today are required or have the opportunity to approach the electoral court. They have until the, the, the third, I mean the second of April, and once the court has received those, the court will consider the matters um, and make its decisions known, it, or it is expected in terms of the election timetable that the court will decide on all such matters by the 9th of April. Um, and, and, and we move from there. So what we have done today, we have kicked the process. It, it has a review, uh, review um, appeal uh, uh, processes that are available to those that are aggrieved by the decisions um, and and once uh, those those processes have been determined um, we the ballot paper and other things will, will 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 continue Natasha I think I think we have put on the statement um, the, numbers. the numbers that you you you, you, you require um, and and I think um, yeah that answers the questions there's one more Commissioner Love says I didn't answer. Um, Commissioner Love, go for it. Um, the parties, uh, the number of parties that um, were not compliant, um, the, the, the issue is that we deal with objections as commissioned. Um, the administration deals with issues of, of non-compliance of various kinds. Possibly that um, the necessary lists were not up uploaded, possibly that the necessary signatures were not provided. 
um, possibly that the documents supporting the signatures, possibly that the um, uh, necessary uh, payments were not provided. So in other words, the preemptory requirements of the Act were not complied with. That would happen before the Section 30 um, objections, and I'm sure that um, at, a, at a stage, um, at a slightly later stage, the administration will be able to give um, uh, those kinds of reports. I think that the important thing just to recognize is to the extent possible that the, the legislation, the law, allows us to be inclusive. I think that the Commission has sought to do that. But of course, we can't make rules for one party that don't apply to all. So I think that's the important thing. Thanks. Uh, Commissioners, thank you very much. I, I do not see uh, Judge, uh, Commissioners, Machinini. Thank you. Um, I don't see any, any, any further uh, hands. Uh, fr from the chair, uh, not as in the chair of the Electoral Commission, <laughs> but for the chair of, the, of this gathering, I want just to say uh, to members of the media that I think um, the, the, what we would ask is that uh, when those rumors uh, feed through uh, the media, that perhaps what, what is good to do is to push people to, to provide evidence uh, so that we don't perpetuate uh, rumors uh, and keep repeating them until they become a self-fulfilling um, reality. I think that is not particularly helpful to any of us. And then uh, from the perspective of the Electoral Commission, we thank you for coming through. It is indeed the eve of um, a long weekend. We wish you um, a great uh, Easter long weekend. Uh, safe, please. Um, drive cautiously. Remember that uh, we have to see you the other side of the Easter weekend so that uh, we can continue um, our journey to the 29th of May and beyond. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Commission, we thank you so much for your indulgence and uh, we wish you um, a fantastic afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I